Hey, it's Jack Gravely. Join me Monday through Friday from 9 to 12 noon. My show will entertain, inform, and hopefully educate you on local and national issues that affect us all. That's weekdays from 9 to 12 noon. The Jack Gravely Show here on WLEE News Talk 990. Listen to Jack Gravely online. Just click the Listen Live link on WLEE 990.am. Thank you so very much for staying with us on the Jack Gravely Show. Coming to you from WLEE News Talk 990. I've been telling you uh, that attorney and delegate Joe Marcy uh, has consented to be on the Jack Gravely Show. We have him on the line. Uh, he uh, represents part of Richmond and other counties in the General Assembly. He's a delegate, uh, a, a very active in the community, uh, a good criminal attorney, and we're very glad to have him on the show. And what I specifically want to talk with attorney Marcy about this morning, he recently wrote a letter to the Time Dispatch, giving Democrats a little advice. And in that letter, Attorney Marcy said that Democrats should not try to use uh, the uh, scandal and all of the stuff coming out by the governor as a platform to run for governor and to win the governorship here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We thought it was worthy to have him on the show to talk about it. Attorney Joe Marcy, welcome again to the Jack Gravely Show. Thank you, Jack. It's always a pleasure to be back on your show, and you did a you did a great lead up and a great summary as to my recent letter to the editor. And why did you uh, feel that it was necessary uh, uh, to say that to your uh, uh, Democratic brothers and sisters? Here's why: whenever there is a problem with the other side, a scandal or something, the at first blush there is an inclination to rush in and criticize them for that. Um, and what you really do at the end of the day is you do yourself a disservice. What I said in my letter was this. Democrats, stay away from it. Let the courts, let the grand juries run its course. But if you get involved, number one, you then make it a political issue, and other people then tend to respond, oh, I'm not going to pay attention to it. It's, it's just a, a political thing. However, there's another point. Um, we don't want to win the governorship and a board of supervisor seat and a House of Delegates seat because of a scandal. We want to win on the issues that are important to Democrats. Um, auto, you know, universal automatic restoration of rights, expansion of Medicaid, etc. So would you rather win because somebody is involved in a scandal or would you rather win because you are right on the issues? As far as I'm concerned, it's the latter. How, what type of response or feedback have you received since that letter has been published, uh, Mr. Marcy? Actually, um, Jack, first of all, you make me nervous when you say Mr. We know, know we've known Joe, each other Joe, long enough for you to call me Joe. Okay. And when you call me Mr., I'm looking over my shoulder <laughs> to see if my dad is in the room. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, okay, all right, I got it, I got all right. it. <laughs> um, Jack, um, the, I've heard back from three or four folks, including a couple of the statewide candidates, and you know what? They said, you're right, Joe. I am not going to, I'm not going to refer to it. I am going to go out there and, you know, propose my ideas, my reasons why I should be running for statewide office or for re-election to the House of Delegates, and I'm not going to be focusing on the scandal. And I think that's a good approach, you know? Um, and there's another thing, and it's, you know, it's kind of the undercurrent here. Jack, you do, I think somebody does themselves a disservice if they wish I never, ever wish anything bad upon anybody else. I always wish and pray that I do the best that I can, but if you start wishing bad things on other people, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's bad karma, it's unchristian, and I don't think it's a good thing even, to do. E even if they are, are Republicans? Even if they're Republicans, <laughs> yes. Don't, I wish, that, Joe. don't I had... wish bad things on other people. However, wish that things, you know, there's nothing wrong to wishing or praying that the truth comes out and that the public get a full, transparent accounting of what took place, that's fine. But, you know, the sports analogy is the best thing, Jack. You know, we all, you and I, have both participated in high school and intercollegiate right, sports. Right. You never wish something bad upon your opponent. At least for me, I always prayed that I would do the best that I could, and I hope that was enough uh, to win. And again, using an analogy, would you rather win a football championship because the other side defaulted? That's like this gift gate, the scandal right, that's right. unfolding. Or would you rather win because you're the better team and you, you, you executed the plays better? I'm thinking the latter. I am too. Joe, uh, let me go to the debate this weekend. 
uh, what is your take on uh, McAuliffe and Cuccinelli's first debate over at the homestead? Um, once again, my, my, the debate from and what's important is how it's reviewed in the press, mm-hmm. not if you were actually watching it, because, you know, one tenth of one hundredth of one percent maybe have watched it online, whereas the majority of the people, they're going to get, they're going to glean what happened. Um, both people acquitted themselves well in the in this sense that they were on the offensive and they were aggressive. However, if we've learned anything in politics, you, I think one of the best things you can do in a debate is saying, listen, I'm not going to get down in the mud and grovel with you. Here is what I'm going to do if I'm elected governor. Here's the four things that I'm going to do. And when that's reported in the press later on, people said, you know, good on that person for doing that. They told us what they're going to do as opposed to, you know, uh, beating down the other person. And um, uh, so the end of the day, Jack, neutral, first debate was neutral. Um, I've got a prediction on what's going to happen, though. In the future, um, that's and, a little and bit redundant. That? And what is that? It's this. Right now, here are the facts. Uh, McAuliffe has outraised Cuccinelli three to one. Cuccinelli is having a very difficult time raising money because of the gift gate scandal. Accordingly, he's also dipped in the polls. He's now four to seven points behind, depending on whose internal poll you're looking at. But that's we, we, we're not in August yet, Joe. We, we, we still... No, I know. I know. Okay. I know. Okay. Yeah, we're not even in August yet, and the, but that's significant, okay? Here's what I predict. If, the, if it stays the same way, you're going to see uh, Cuccinelli coming out going very, very negative in order to make up that ground. My... Uh, Opinion for what it's worth, my two cents is for McAuliffe and the statewide candidates to stay on course. Bust your tail, meeting with as many folks and groups as you want, articulating your vision for the Commonwealth. Don't stoop back to get into a tit for tat with the other side. If you do that, it'll be a Democratic sweep in November. All right. The other issue that uh, uh, some people say, Joe Marcy. Uh, uh, you and, and, and your band of, of brothers and sisters, you all didn't take out Rosalind Dance uh, down in Petersburg as yep. you wanted to. Uh, what gives Joe Marcy and his group, or even Joe Marcy, the right to come out and tell Democrats what to do? How do you answer that criticism? Okay, good, good, good point. First of all, absolutely no regrets with respect to the Rosalind Dance issue. I did what was right, okay, and I did it. Uh, at, with no possible potential benefit for me. I got tired of sitting in the House chamber as Roz Dance voted for the secret Republican redistricting plan. And I got tired when she sat on appropriations and didn't vote for Medicaid expansion. How can an urban leader, a legislator, an African-American legislator in an urban city, not vote for Medicaid expansion? And I had enough. So I did something about it. Um, and if people, I, and, and, and to answer your question directly, People know that Joe Morrissey, when he speaks his mind, he's being very clear. You never have to wonder where he's coming from. I speak from the heart. I say what I think is right, and then I do it. Agree with me or disagree with me, I am not going to tell two different people two different sides of the story. So um, I did that with Rosalind Dance, and right now um, I'm a member of the House Democratic Caucus. Um, I, I think I've got some good intuition on how to run campaigns, and the proof is in the pudding. Several Democrats called me back and said, Joe, you're absolutely right. We're going to pull back from uh, criticizing the governor until we know all the facts. Uh, with Rosalind Dan, some people are saying that you all may have pushed her, you and Senator Marsh may have pushed her into a corner that gives her no choice but to go with her friends in the legislature, and her friends happen to be Republicans. That's right. They do. She got elected because of Republicans. Listen, here's the thing, Jack. Vote any way you want, Roz. Vote your heart. Vote your conscience. I've said that from day one. But what I did not like was this. She would go and vote with Republicans on their the governor's takeover of schools uh, and then vote on the Republican side and then go back to Petersburg and say, you know, I'm with you guys. I'm right there with you. That's disingenuous. That's wrong. And that's why I, I, I did it. So um, let, her, let her vote the way she wants, but next time run as a Republican. That's uh, all. 
Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who may be listening or just tuned in, I have with me Delegate Joe Marcy, uh, delegate here from the Richmond area. He's on the Jack Gravely show. He wrote uh, a, a real strong letter and a very clear letter.